Hey pros, it's that time of the year where everybody's talking about temperature. Temperature, temperature, temperature. The weather really takes hold of our thoughts out there. We start winterizing. We're like, gosh, bleach doesn't work. We hear everybody say, oh, it doesn't work, or people argue that it does work. Well, you know how much I hate to hear the pronouns I've heard. They said, she thinks. So we're going to put some hardcore data to the facts here. I've got two different uh, samples. I've got a 43 degree sample. That came out of the fridge. I've got a 22 degree sample. That came out of the freezer. I'm putting in two equal sizes of red shop cloths in here. Going to wring them out and we're going to put them back in their respective controlled temperature areas. That's just a fancy way of saying I'm going to put them back in the freezer and the fridge. Let's go to the fridge. Come with me on a journey through the shop. Sorry, it's a mess. I wasn't really planning on doing this experiment today. Don't mind my lunch that's sitting in there. Uh, I'll probably eat that a little bit later today. So this sample is going into the refrigerator side. The other sample is going to go, you guessed it, into the freezer side. And we'll check these temperatures a little bit during the experiment here to make sure uh, we are getting the proper controls on there. I'm also just going to go put the camera back on the workbench over here because I have a clock running on there so we can get a little bit of an idea of how long this is taking. All right, it's time to do the first temperature test. Let's go back over here. It's been a couple of minutes, so bringing the digital thermometer, gonna open up the refrigerator and the fridge. Let's check this out. Hey, my lunch is still there, I haven't eaten. Okay, on the refrigerator side, we've got a temperature of 40 degrees. On the freezer side, let's see where we're at. We've got a temperature of 12 degrees on the freezer side. So, um, looking at them. Um, Hard to tell the temperature in this strange refrigerator type light, uh, but we'll look at it here in a second. A few minutes have passed now. Let's do another check on here, make sure our temperatures are still uh, remaining constant in the fridge freezer area. Okay, oops, got a bump. Looks like we got some bleach in action going out on this one. Starting to get a little bit lighter. Gonna lay that back down in there. And on the freezer side, let's see what we got here. Not as prevalent of a bleaching. Pulling that out so y'all can see, but we do have some bleaching taking place on there. I think we need to go and take a temperature reading on here, but guess what? I forgot my thermometer back on the workbench, so let's take another trip through spray wash land. Again, apologize for the messy shop. Let's get the thermometer and check these temperatures out. So, on the freezer side, it looks like we're hanging around, drum roll please, 19 degrees. I have left the door open so it's a little warmer. And on the fridge side, we are at 44 degrees. We're gonna seal this guy up, give it a few more minutes, check it again in a few. Okay, it's time for the great big reveal. We're gonna take our freezer side and our fridge side stuff out, bring it onto the workbench, check temperatures, and really check this color on there and see which has had the uh, uh, stronger bleaching action. All right, I'm grabbing one up here. Let's go ahead, that's the refrigerator. We're gonna carry it over to the workbench. Don't want any cross contamination, so we're not going to uh, get them both out at the same time. Lay in the fridge one down here, and you can see it's 1219 at this point. Uh, that's coming out at 49 degrees. The ambient air temperature really, really warms this stuff up quickly. That's one of the problems that we have. Um, we're getting great uh, empirical data on here. It just warms it up so fast. 
That's why you're seeing it going from 40 degrees up to 50 very quickly. We're going to grab out Mr. Freezer here. See what's happening with that. And you can see that it is bleached, so it's working. It is not bleached as much as the refrigerator one, the one that was a higher temperature. Um, I don't know how it's it's looking in the light here, uh, but through my own you know eyes, through my own human eyes looking at it live, the stuff on the refrigerator side had a pronounced amount of bleaching on there uh, over the freezer side. Now, that being said, was the cold stuff still bleached out? Yeah, it was. The bleach was still working even at below freezing temperatures. Uh, you can see the ambient air has already warmed that up to 42 to start with, quickly went up to 48. Now it's in the, in the 50s already on there. It's amazing how fast it starts to warm up. So I'm going to call that 50-ish. So there you have it. Even the cold bleach, whenever we maintained it at a controlled temperature in the fridge, in the freezer, first off, the bleach still worked. Second off, the warmer bleach worked faster than the freezing bleach. However, the freezing bleach did work. Another reason you might have some temperature variations on here is as bleach works and as bleach is working against these organic fibers, it's actually creating some heat that's helping to warm up uh, the towels themselves. All right, guys, um, what have we learned from this? I don't know, bleach still works whenever it's cold? It does. Um, does that mean we ought to still be washing outside whenever it's cold? That's, you know, for you to decide. What really has a lot of impact on the bleach is the ambient air temperature, too. And it's real easy for us to control the temperature of the bleach, which, if your bleach is outside, it will be cold. It's really hard for us to control the temperature of the air. That's why I was keeping it in the refrigerator and the freezer um, to try to maintain the temperatures on there. But we see even in those uh, controlled environments, you know, it was still having some bleaching action going on. So don't necessarily listen that it's not going to work at all in the colder temps because it will work in the colder temps. Now there is a certain degree point where your, your bleach will get slushy uh, down around zero degrees. Um, it really does turn into where the salt starts to separate out of it. Um, the other thing you really have to worry about, though, and take into consideration is, well, how slow is it acting? And then am I having to go and re-winterize all of my equipment? You know, do I have to, to unwinterize in the morning? Do I have to go out and wash a house? Do I have to re-winterize at night? So you could, in theory, have, uh, you know, an hour or a two-hour job take you you know, between the, the slowness of, of the mix working um, and, and the extra equipment steps you're going to have to take on there, a two-hour job could wind up taking you four or five hours, um, realistically. So one of the reasons that we kind of naturally tend to slow down in the winter times there as far as uh, washing is concerned, which is a good thing because the calls slow down too. So many of us have to are forced to slow down. But keep this in mind, if you ever have an emergency type scenario, you've got to go out, uh, you've got to work. If you use a little more bleach and you give it a little bit longer dwell time, your bleach will work, uh, albeit slower. Uh, if you can get up into the 30s to the 40s, you'll get some, some knockdown and kill action. Hey, this is Ray, Spray Wash Exterior Cleaning, Spray Wash Pro, Wash On, guys and hope to see y'all in Orlando real soon. Uh, if you're watching this uh, right after I posted it, remember January 27, 28, the Power Wash Store uh, Vendor Showcase event. Hope to see you down there. Spray Wash Pro, Spray Wash Academy. We're gonna have some great educational classes down there. Find us online, spraywashacademy.com. Look forward to see y'all then, bye-bye.